say that. This man right here. This is Maynard Ferguson. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks. Nice to have you come and be with us I'm today. delighted to be here. Uh, how old were you when you picked up a horn for the first time? I oh, I've, I've been playing uh, music since I was four, and uh, that's all I've ever done. That's all I ever wanted to do, and I just think I'm uh, very fortunate that... Uh, uh, God let me know what to do uh, when I was four. Right? And you didn't have any midlife crisis. You didn't have to reorder your priorities. You knew where you were going all the way. It seems like that, yes. Of course, you were magic, though. You know, a lot of kids uh, pick up a horn, you know, and they go to their music lesson and they drive their parents crazy and they get in the marching band. That's about as far as it goes. But yeah. in your case, there was something special. Well, I tell you what, on the other hand, the uh, marching bands uh, are what's uh, making music uh, uh, great in America today, not just the marching bands, but the uh, uh, the concert bands, the stage bands, as they call it, and uh, uh, all those things that have to do with music education. So uh, the young people today uh, have such a, uh, a multi-directional love of music uh, that that's why sometimes half times are more exciting than the ball <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're right. When you were little and you played, you must have improvised an awful lot. Did that improvisation help you greatly as you grew up? Oh, very much so. Uh, we were just discussing yesterday that jazz improvisation is one thing and also the lost art of classical improv uh, improvisation. And uh, so that's part of... Uh, uh, music that's uh, been uh, uh, with me, I guess, all my days. Uh, to me, the instruments are toys. I really never think of words like dedication, sacrifice. I think that's really silly. Uh, I have a lot of fun in life, and uh, uh, anybody who can do it for as long as I have and mm -hmm. uh, uh, feel that at uh, age 55 it's even more fun than it was when I was 9 or 10, uh, I think I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, you must have made a right career decision somewhere <laughs> along the line. <laughs> Has jazz itself, the basics of it, changed at all over those years? Oh, well, I, uh, years? yes. W uh, with a lot of artists such as myself, we uh, enjoy being contemporary, but not in the sense that uh, is usually meant by the media. Uh, 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 we're re enjoying it not because it's contemporary, be but because it's a changing art form. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's done here and now. And uh, as opposed to a recording or a videotape, which is, of course, a recording of something that was done before. And so uh, our performances are, are fun in that we uh, just go right out there and do it. We don't get any second chances like a painter. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, Peabody's has moved to the flats, and they have the cove down there, and that's where you were yesterday. That's right. And uh, how has the audience changed? for you over the years? Uh, the you audience young, is... Young kids now? Uh, I'm sure I'm not getting older, but uh, <laughs> uh, the audience has gotten very much younger, and uh, that has to do, once again, with the uh, music educators and uh, also with uh, what's uh, the, an awareness of uh, music in this country uh, by the young people and the young music students. I was talking to some college kids the other day, and they all agreed that the most important thing in their lives, perhaps even more important in their college careers, then what they're actually studying is the music that they listen to, that they have around them, that they surround themselves with in their cars, in their rooms, wherever that's, they go. That's right. Now, it, it's no longer just uh, buy your kid a stereo for uh, mm -hmm. uh, his dorm. Uh, and now it's the Walkmans, right? And the, uh, you know, they don't even have to carry those big things if they want to be really hip. They've, uh, they've got their earphones and, uh, yeah. and they're really into Pocket it. And radio. every guy in my band is a award winner of some kind, uh, whether it's North Texas State University or the Eastman School of Music or Berkeley or University of Miami. Uh, uh, they're all uh, uh, very well educated young musicians. And they sit there with those earphones and they'll say, hey, man, I dig this. <laughs> uh, you know, so uh, I get educated by all those wonderful musicians in my band as well as uh, uh, whatever I pass on to them. Somebody wants to t uh, ask a question. Good morning. Oh, I'm... hi, Maynard. Hi, how are you? <laughs> okay, fine. I was down at the Cove last night for both sets and I finally regained my hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Fantastic. The guys in the band have got such great volume and accuracy with their tonguing, it was terrific. Well, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So you ha you run a tight ship and a tight band. Well, oh, I would say that it's a very tight band, but it's more a question of uh, uh, a love of the music rather than any real uh, personality dominance of the old man <laughs> over the crew. <laughs> you know. uh, hi, your question. Hi, good morning. Uh, Maynard. Uh -huh. I just wanted to say hi and thanks for um, all the years of inspiration. I have played trumpet for uh, 10 years. Oh, that's great. And uh, I just think you're terrific. Yeah, I've <laughs> been a fan of yours for years, and uh, I just wanted to say thanks. Oh, well, thank you very much for calling. Okay, bye. 
Was there, a, as you were growing up, any trumpet players that you used to look upon with awe? And are there any today? Oh, well, there are many today. I've got three marvelous trumpet players in my band. I always make a joke about the fact that they're all great lead trumpet players, all three of them. One of them's from the University of Houston. I didn't mention that school. But uh, uh, all three of them are such uh, marvelous soloists that I never allowed them to play. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I always say, as soon as they get just a little bit better, I'm going to fire them. <laughs> Hi, your question. Hi, first of all, I'd like to tell Amanda I think he's terrific. And second of all, when can we get his new album? Oh. Speaking when of am I, uh, well, is it, oh, we're going to plug the album now. Sure, I might as well. Oh, it okay, up. isn't that marvelous? Okay. <laughs> Uh, yet another increase in my incredible wealth. Uh, uh, this is called the Storm Album, and uh, and it has uh, things like uh, a version of Sesame Street and uh, As Time Goes By, which is really fun on the album, and uh, then a lot of uh, original m um, material as well, and uh, Latino Love Walk, which is a a very exciting thing uh, that we really enjoy. And oh, can I've I read that? I've never seen an album with a warning on it. Well, well this, uh, this is an album that's it's an audio file and a digital and all that kind of thing. And I just love this. Actually, I wish you'd read right, that. Let me read this but to you. This and I want this to be serious now. This, <laughs> this is, is real serious. It yeah. says, warning, the dynamic range of this recording may exceed the capabilities of your cartridge and audio system. You <laughs> must calibrate your stylus tracking weight and anti-skidding force to their recommended perspective optimal level isn't that incredible <laughs> wow that, that would, what does I, that mean I, I think I'd that would scare of, me from buying the I'd album myself <laughs> there's got to be a lot of sound coming yeah. out of that album uh, well there is a lot of sound and it's very very well recorded and it's produced by jeffrey weber and uh and all that sort of thing but the audio file thing is borrowing uh the techniques of today other than the stacking and overdubbing uh there's no editing in this it's just straight ahead this is what you played, and this is what. But by doing that, you have a superior uh, recording co quality. Uh, but I thought the, uh, I think the warning is absolutely charming. Uh, you know, well, some of the young guys in the band can do it. You know, like, uh, hey, it's all happening. Now. Just be careful that you don't. Uh, you know, and they uh, they do the yeah. the rock disc jockey uh, uh, imitations and things like that. It's kind of fun. Yeah. So this is uh, this is very. Uh, it's low tech, high tech. I that is to say, you're just playing the music and yeah. they're recording it, but they're recording it in the best possible way. That's right. Yeah. No overdubbing. You're just playing a set and that's it's right. right onto the mm -hmm. onto the recording, which is, uh, of course, a nice nice circle. We've come full circle. It is amazing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, you're on your way to Toronto in a few minutes, and then you're off to uh, India. Uh, well, we're going to go and play in Japan for a, for a week in the Japanese Alps. That's a whole thing put on by George Ween and all those uh, Newport Jasmine. people Great and all those. Uh, uh, cool cigarette people or whatever it is they do uh, but so uh, and then going to India where I spend a month every year anyway uh, with my wife so that's kind of vacation time except mm -hmm. we will do five concerts in India so we're very excited about that Maynard thanks a million for coming by this morning well thank you for having me Play nice to see great. you again thank you Maynard Ferguson we'll tell you about tomorrow's show